Shayanti Mukherjee. I'm a senior research scientist and head of translational tissue engineering lab at Hudson Institute of Medical Research. Pelvic flow disorders are extremely common. Uh, an Australian study showed that two out of three births are associated with some form of injury. And so globally, 25% women across all age groups can have some form of pelvic flow disorder. As women age, this could increase to one in two women over the age of 50 years who have previously given birth. So you can imagine the burden of the disease is very high. Pelvic organ prolapse is a highly debilitating gynecological condition that affects millions of women worldwide. The main risk factor is vaginal childbirth. Injuries incurred during vaginal childbirth can lead to chronic disorders where there is a biomechanical failure of the pelvic flow and ultimately the organs herniate out of the body. So these could be of different types. For example, it could be the bladder, it could be the rectum, or it could be the uterus itself that starts to herniate out of the body because of the weakening of the tissue around it. Vaginal childbirth is the main risk factor for pelvic organ prolapse. It can also be increased due to factors such as obesity, multiple births, or use of instruments during delivery. So factors such as diabetes can also uh, contribute to this condition because the baby's head is larger. So overall, any uh, factor that causes tearing or uh, excessive stretching of the tissues in the pelvic floor during birth can lead to chronic uh, pelvic floor disorders such as pelvic organ prolapse. Until recently, uh, non-degradable meshes were used for surgical repair of pelvic organ prolapse. However, uh, emerging evidence showed uh, an increased risk of complication and the risks outweighed the benefits. As a result, the products were completely withdrawn and there was a ban globally on these uh, synthetic meshes. Our research focuses on developing the next generation of uh, therapeutics using degradable polymers. We also aim to make these meshes more tissue friendly by mimicking some of the architecture of the native tissue and boost its regenerative capacity using stem cells that are already present in women's body in the uterus that regenerates the uterus every month to perfection. So we employ strategies like nanofabrication and 3D printing to develop our constructs that can be transplanted and we hope that ultimately this will integrate really well with the body and we will minimize the risk of any adversities.